Hello and good, well, it's good morning. Yes, good morning and welcome to New Forest Morphs. Uh, Jared is literally about to sit his exam. It's 11 o'clock on Thursday morning, so I'm doing some self-filming. So he's in our prayers and we hope Jared is going to give it his best shot and do well on the exam. Hopefully he'll uh, let us know how he gets on. But uh, while he's doing that, I've uh, spent three hours cleaning the collection. <laughs> it's been quite a big one today. It's amazing when you do things on your own, how much longer it takes. And uh, I wanted to put out some content and just say thank you everyone for jumping on our channel. And uh, thank you so much for our new subscribers. And we are growing nicely and we're 922 subs and moving towards the 1000 subs. So thank you very much for your love and support and for your feedback on yesterday's video. We had some really good feedback, lots of comments building. So thank you so much. Uh, there was two that I wanted to pick out that I thought were really interesting. One of them was from Mark Higgins. Now Mark is saying that he's uh, he really enjoyed the video because he's thinking on the same wavelength as me. He's thinking that he wants to have a, uh, a extended play area off the rubs and he's looking at designing his own setup. And I think he's um, got quite a large space that he's having above the rubs that he's going to connect in. And the idea is that he can change the rubs so there'll be a rub in one position that'll have a connection to the viv above and the idea is that he can take out the draw and replace it with another snake and then they've got the option to use the viv when they want to now obviously to do that you'll need to make sure that the roof of the uh, rub is disinfected before you change your snake because you obviously you don't want any cross contamination if there's an issue and obviously you'd have to then spray down and clean your um, play area as well so that they won't um, they won't have any cross contamination. So it will involve a little bit more time and effort, but I love the idea of having a rotary position so that each snake can have its turn in the playground, if you like, the Viv playground. So thank you, Mark, for sharing your thoughts and views, and I hope that uh, your season's going well. I know that you were worried about a particular ovulation, and I hope that things are moving right for you and that your um, future animals are going to plan. The other person I want to give a shout out to is a guy called Jim Thomas, who shared his experience with a boa constrictor. And thank you, Jim, I um, really appreciate your feedback. He was saying that he bought a, um, a boa constrictor um, many, many years ago, and it was actually raised in a rub system, but he found that the boa wasn't as muscular as it should have been, and it was like need of some rehab. And uh, he put it into a bigger facility uh, with, um, branches to, to be able to explore and over time he said that the muscle build on his boa constrictor restored and it was much more active and much more healthy so i'd like to thank uh, jim for sharing your experience with us and he hasn't got any ball pythons but he said he's really thinking about it and uh, we wish you well jim on your journey if you do go into the ball python uh, hobby like us so keep us posters let us know how you go so today we're going to um at the end, I'm going to do things slightly differently here because I want to um, show you some of the animals and their behaviour. Um, but before I do that, I've wanted to discuss um, something which is used quite a lot by some of the top breeders. I know Billy at Mutation Creation uses it and I was watching one of Billy's videos. I think Austin, with the assistance of one of his friends, was administering a vitamin supplement to some of the snakes, females and males, that were off food. And I understand that that vitamin supplement was called Da Vinci Boa. And I think there's a guy called Richard Da Vinci that's got a lot of boas. And he's been using it. He made it himself. Um, it's a mixture of amino acids, vitamin supplements, and, that, and also calcium. And uh, he's been using it for five years. And he saw a marked improvement in the health of his snakes. Now, he is using a rub system. Now, I think one of the dangers of using a rub system is that... Um, there can be a calcium deficiency, particularly with ball pythons, because the females are giving so much calcium to the build of the eggs. And the males obviously are building all the time as they're um, not building, but they are um, using up a lot of energy as they're breeding. And I think many of us would have experienced one or two males going off food during the breeding season. And what Billy was saying is that since he was been using the boa, da Vinci boa, uh, which is available globally, um, that they were having 75% of their males and females going back on food very quickly and they were seeing an improvement in the health of their animals. So I do think that there's two things going on here. I think that the rub system does actually or can lead to, with combined breeding, um, a deficiency in calcium even though the diet that they, they take, which is the bone structure in the rat, should provide 
sufficient calcium for them. Um, but I do beg the question whether the rats we're getting have sufficient vitamins and supplements in them when they get shipped to us and maybe what our snakes are eating isn't the full diet in which case there's an argument to say you know do we want to use a vitamin supplement do we want to use a uvb light so it's much more natural for them to gain their own calcium from that but it's very very interesting that a lot of the top breeders are using this supplement it kind of reinforces the judgment call that i feel that maybe there is a calcium deficiency if we're absolutely honest in in keeping our snakes breeding them within a rub system. So I'll be welcome your views on that, please. Let me know your thoughts, if anyone's used the, um, the supplement or whether they're using UVB light and what impact that's having on the calcium and the well-being of their snakes. The other thing is um, get healthier clutches because the calcium is much better. And so you're getting stronger uh, hatchlings from this. Now I understand that so there is a way of administering this and I've got to give, I want to give a shout out to one of our new subscribers who has just recently jumped on our channel and we've jumped on his. It's um, a company called Bandy's Exotic Reptiles and they've got about 1.25 subscribers. They've got an amazing collection. I've been watching and enjoying their videos. They're very much like Chad and I, a lot of fun, a lot of banter and uh, it's virtually uncut. I mean, there is an edit on it, but I do like the fact it's very natural and it's uh, very spontaneous and it, it makes me enjoy those kind of channels. Um, so I want to give them a shout out first, but before I do that, I'll introduce you to Richard and uh, Da Vinci Boa, who is meeting, I think we've got um, Bandy's Exotics visits Richard's facility and he shows off some of his beautiful boas, so it'd be nice to see those. Um, but also he explains the background to this vitamin supplement. So I think we'll have a look at this first and then we'll end with a few snakes. So let's just um, jump onto their channel and let's have a look. This is Bandy's Exotics top video, 3.5 thousand views. And let's have a look and see and find out a bit more about this uh, vitamin supplement. Hey, this is Jeremy with Bond's Exotic Reptiles. Welcome back to the channel. We are here with Richard at uh, Da Vinci Boas, and today we are going to be talking about the supplement and how to, uh, to administer it to some of the boas and ball pythons. Richard, last time I was here, um, I, you only had one size bottle. Now it looks yeah. like you have several. Yeah. A lot of the breeders that we deal with have larger collections, so this is only going to go so far in a small collection. So now we're offering larger bottles for people to have many snakes in their collection, okay. um, especially the big boas and the retics and stuff like that. This isn't going to work for them. This, is, this will be good for bearded dragons or any kind of lizard species outside or of the monitors. somebody with a really small collection. Yeah, and then you can go into your... These are 100 mils, 500 mils, and 1,000 mils. Um, Billy Rowe from Mutation Creation orders these because he has a large collection and he likes having the extra stuff on hand, aside from somebody with a smaller collection that can go through this in a few months. So now we're offering these bottles in all sizes. Today we're gonna to go ahead and show how to administer the supplement to uh, some boas. And unfortunately, he doesn't have any ball pythons here, so I'll be doing that a little bit later in the video at my facility and show how we can administer that to the ball python. Um, instead of using syringes, which we found they were a little more, uh, you know, they, they shot the liquid into the, to the mouth. We're using pipettes now, which are just squeeze tubes. Uh, we have one cc's and three cc's, depending on the size of the animal you're using. It's super easy. It slides right down the throat. You administer the, the liquid and pull it out. I'm this is what we started with. Yeah, and it's it's a little more harder, and it can be used like this. I think Billy said he was using this at the moment, and, yeah. I, and I talked to him about these here. Now, the thing is with this, you know, it's hard. It doesn't yeah. really bend very well. Well, the problem we were having with it is when you pulled the liquid into it and you went to shoot it down into the throat, sometimes it would stick and it would just overdo. Mm -hmm. okay. Whereas this is super soft and super easy and you could control the flow of it with this. Yeah. And then yeah. when you put it in, make sure you hold this and pull it out because if not, it'll suck the liquid back up into the tube, which I've seen many, many people do. But after the first time of doing it, you understand and you learn from it. All right. So Richard, you want to tell me about um, who's been buying this product from you so far and, and sure. using it and how it's working for them? 
Yeah, so I've been using it for years uh, myself and my you know my animals and and Daytona last year we decided to debut it and bring it out and you were the first person to buy it and use it on ball pythons. Um, we've sold it for uh, bearded dragon breeders, monitor breeders, Sims container. Uh, John Adragna uses this. He's been using it for a while now. Okay, so please jump on this channel. I think this is very fascinating. I'm not going to show you the whole video, but I want to show you the administration. If I take you to the next spot, let's go to 1520 here. And I want to show you how they administer. They use two people to do so. And here we go. He's got a beautiful boa they're looking at. Yeah, here. yeah man, look at her. She is Yeah, so gorgeous. this is a two-year-old female. Um, and you know like I said once a month once every couple months we'll give her a supplement and she's solid she's very very healthy uh, a lot of people think two-year-olds should be bigger than this we don't raise our females like that we raise them slow and easy but she's been getting supplement for about a year now and as you could tell she's beautiful and it's super easy so basically you just you're not squeezing you know I have total control of her so basically you just put it in her mouth and she'll she'll wiggle back and forth a little bit and then you want to just find the esophagus and you don't want to push you know what i'm saying she'll work it down and then make sure her neck is straight you want to make sure the neck is straight because then the pipette will go down just like that and then you just squeeze slowly and then pull out slow and make sure you're squeezing as yep. you're pulling. Squeeze out. as you pull out because if not, it'll suck the supplement back up. And that's it. Very easy. Simple as that. And then there you go. Now you recommend two people doing this. I mean, it's easier and it's less uh, less stressful on the animal. And as you could tell, the liquid's not falling out of her mouth because we slowly administered that down into her, you know, her throat. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. And then she goes right back in her cage. And well, thank you, Jeremy, and uh, thank you very much, Richard. Um, it's got a lot of information. In this video, it's well worth a look. And some of the thought ports I got at was um, it has. Uh, let's have a little look. Um, worldwide shipping. Billy uses it and has seventy-five percent success on his non-feeders. Um, it has amino acids, vitamins, and calcium in it. Um, it helps to digest meals and the shipping is between three and five days I think they've got a website so go check out their website and see whether you can get your prices there is a warning on here not to put too much supplement into the animal which I think needs to be carefully considered so it might be wise to start small and build gently um, and he was saying he gets much healthier clutches and the females recover better after giving birth and the males feed during the breeding season and get back into strength a lot quicker. So that helps to um, the animals to recover. So there we go, there's a bit of information. Now let's go and have a look at some snakes here in the facility. So we're gonna start over here with Electra, who's our super gravel. And let's just have a look and see what she's up to. Now I don't think she gave us a shed. I'm not sure how good the shed was, but you can see the shed there. Now remember her tub is completely dry the substrate's dry, we've got 61% humidity off, we're doing a fogger humidity. Let's have a look and see how she's looking. There she is, isn't she beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. Very happy, very content. And I just love the electrifying stripes down her back. That's why we call her Electra. She's 2.2 kilograms. And we're thinking about putting our gravel 100% het clown boy to her when she's ready and trying to produce some super gravel offspring because everything will be gravel, of course, but we could end up with some supers and there'll be 50% het for clown. And we want that to go into a clown project, so we'll leave her in peace. And when Jack gets back, we're going to be feeding everything, so we won't be handling these animals today, but we will certainly just check their behavior. Let's go to the next one. Now we had our Mojave Ultra Male um, boy, Titus, who was in shed yesterday. And he's given us a shed as well. You can see it's outside there, it's in two parts, but he's completely clean. Let's have a little look. There he is. 
So there's our breeder boy. You can see at the very back, if I show you at the very back, you'll see it's sheds in three parts there. But it's perfect. It's enough for it to come off his body completely. And he's looking really, really good. So we won't disturb him, we'll put him back. So two sheds that are acceptable. I'd like to see him keep the whole shed together next time, but we might just have to increase the humidity a little bit, a little bit more. And over here, we've got Penelope, our pin, pinstripe, and she gave us a complete shed. And again, I don't think it's absolutely perfect, but it's certainly not sticking on her body. And there she is. There is our big pin girl. And there's our shed. So three good sheds. So we're very, very happy with that. And we'll call that a wrap there. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the the video and uh, please do check out that Da Vinci boa. I think Jad and I have got a lot to discuss, see whether we want to try it and see whether it will help us or at least have it available for us. Um, I'm having problems shutting this rub so just bear with me. <laughs> but um, there we go. So thank you very much for watching and we shall see you tomorrow. Bye bye for now.